Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to show you how to create a paper wallet for your Monero cryptocurrency. So let's get going. Okay, so uh, I've had a few people ask me about uh, how to create a paper wallet uh, for their Monero. So I'm going to show you uh, what I consider the best way to do it. So uh, let's get going. Okay, uh, so uh, in order to generate a paper wallet for Monero, I'm going to take you over to this uh, moneroaddress.org website. And uh, this is a website where you can generate a Monero wallet. As you'll notice, just going to the website, generated one, you can regenerate here, uh, and it's going to change. You're given a seed, uh, you're giving a, a couple of uh, private keys over here, and then uh, a public key that you can give out to people uh, and you know keep for yourself uh, so that you can check your balance and uh, send funds to it. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to show you how to create the wallet today. I'm not going to go into how you withdraw funds from it. Uh, but that's uh, a subject of another video. So I'm not going to do it this way uh, because basically what uh, right now I'm connected to the internet and uh, to be uh, super secure you want to do this offline and the best way to do it is to scroll down here uh, where uh, they mentioned that they'll take you to the git repository. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up and uh, this is the github site and I'm just going to clone and download this whole thing. Uh, download as a zip. All right, I'm going to go over here to my software folder and I'm going to create a new folder called uh, Monero Paper. Oops. All right. And uh, enter. Just uh, open up that folder and drop this guy down in there. All right. Now I'm going to show you how to verify this file. Cryptographic verification is your best defense against uh, man-in-the-middle attacks or third-party adversaries that are trying to fool you into downloading uh, their version of the wallet or some version of malware, keylogger, uh, bad stuff that will just steal your coins. Okay, So the cryptographic verification is a very important step. Now some of you don't like it, uh, so you're welcome to skip over it. I'm going to put uh, an overlay on here that will show you the time code on the video if you just wish to skip to the point where I actually create the wallet and you're welcome to do that. But uh, I'm going to demonstrate how to verify. All right. So uh, in order to verify, uh, they've given us some information here. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the folder where I just downloaded the paper wallet. I'm going to uh, extract with uh, 7-zip into a folder with the same name and here we go uh, the readme is not really that important it just basically goes over what the website says uh, now this file here this uh, this uh, cryptographic signature file uh, is gonna what we're gonna use to verify this wallet generator now before we can do that we need to get the uh, developer signature and that's over here uh, if you'll notice here, uh, Monero moves GPG key. They give you specific instructions. I'm going to show you how to go through that. Uh, now, if you click the link, it's just going to take you uh, over to uh, the, uh, this bit of ciphertext, which you could uh, cut and paste into a text file, but it's much easier to just right-click the file and choose Save Link As okay and it has the right name and as you can see it's going to be a dot ASC file we're just gonna click save now you'll notice here he gives you uh, the the commands for importing his key in the command line and that's perfectly fine uh, I'm gonna show you a kind of a graphical user interface now uh, keep in mind in order to do this you're going to need to have to have the GNU uh, PG software installed on your computer. In this case, we're using GPG for Windows. So you will need to have this installed on your computer before you can do these verifications. Uh, 
So, uh, having said that, I'll leave a link down in the description for that. Okay, so now that we have all of the files that we need, huh? Ah, okay. <laughs> it got saved up here. Okay, I'm just going to drop it in here. All right. So here it is, uh, Monero Moo. That's the uh, developer signature file. All right. So we're going to need to import that into our key ring before we can run this verification. So uh, the way to do that uh, graphically is to uh, launch GPA. It's the graphical user interface that uh, allows you to sort of wrap your head around this whole idea of a key ring. Okay. So you can see I've got a few uh, keys in there from other developers. And uh, what I want to do is add the uh, Monero Moo uh, key to this uh, key ring or key manager. So I'm just, uh, I'm going to choose import. And I'm going to navigate over to the file which I put in software, Monero Prepper Wallet, and uh, there it is right there, Monero Moo ASC. I'm going to click Open, and you'll notice there that it tells me that uh, imported a public key, read and imported a public key, and there it is, okay? That's the file that we need. Uh, we can even uh, check the fingerprint if we want to against uh, a fingerprint posted online, but we're not going to go uh, all, you know, full tilt on this. We're just going to import the key, and assume it's uh, correct. This this is a whole uh, rabbit hole when we get into verification, but I'm just going to show you the top level steps here. All right, I'm going to want to open up Windows PowerShell here. So I'm just going to hold the Shift key down and right click in this folder and choose Open PowerShell Window here. And the reason I did that was because this is kind of a long uh, path name and it just opened it up in the right path that I needed. So I'll just hit DIR and just double check that the files are in there the way they need to be. The way I do it is uh, I do the full verification including the file that we're verifying. So uh, we do a gpg dash dash verify and uh, we uh, put the file name and that's our first parameter, and then the second parameter is going to be the file that we're actually verifying. Okay? There it is. All right, and so we see that we've got a, a good signature here. And uh, the warning can be safely ignored in this case, and uh, as he mentions in his instructions, the warning is expected. All right, so now that we've done this verification, we can safely run this thing. All right. I know it's a little bit long uh, and complicated, uh, but it is uh, a secure step to take. So if you don't know how to do this, uh, maybe study up a little bit about uh, what this is entailing. I walked you through the steps here <coughs> so that you can verify it on your own. This ensures that you've got the right file that wasn't switched uh, by a third party uh, man in the middle attack or you know an adversary or something like that. Okay, enough about that. Now what we want to do is run this wallet generator, and but we want to run it offline. So there's a couple of ways that we can do that. One is we can reach around behind our computer and just unplug the network cable. That's a pretty simple way to do it. Uh, another way to do it is uh, if you're on a laptop, you want to make sure that you've uh, disconnected from your wireless uh, network. Okay, so now that I've disconnected the cables in the back of my computer, you can see that uh, my uh, network status says that I'm not connected. And this is offline, right? We don't want to be connected to the internet when we generate this wallet. Uh, actually, let's try to launch Chrome and see what happens. Uh, if we go to Gmail, it's going to tell us there's no internet. This is what we want. Okay, so let's uh, close this out. Uh, let's launch the uh, off wallet it, it has the all of the information on the web page is there and uh, you know it has already generated a wallet for us okay so uh, you're not going to want to reveal this information to anyone else so and we want to have it saved so let's see what happens when we do print what comes of this okay that's pretty good um, we don't really need all of this down here. We definitely don't need this third page. Um, but I'll go ahead and print the first two pages, right? 
All right. Now we can save this as a PDF if we want to. See, I have my printer set to PDF. In fact, I'm going to have to do that because when I'm uh, disconnected from my network, I don't have access to my printer. It's not local. So I'm just going to choose Save. And I'll go ahead and uh, save this here. Uh, you could probably, you'll probably want to save it offline uh, and uh, off computer, right? Uh, you'll want to put this, uh, where are we here? Here it is. Uh, you'll want to put this uh, paper wallet somewhere safe, right? You don't want it to be on the computer. You'll put it on a flash drive, keep it in a separate location, uh, and better yet, an encrypted flash drive. Uh, some of my other videos, I explained how to create encrypted flash drive. Uh, but you will also want to make note of this public address. Now you can safely keep this on your computer. In fact, now that we have the uh, website still open, I'll just uh, copy this public address. And that can be safely saved. Okay, so uh, I've got the public address uh, that will allow me to uh, send funds to the wallet or check the balance of the wallet. And that can be safely left on your computer. So uh, just as a demonstration, I will take a uh, non-encrypted flash drive. Like I said, you could use an encrypted flash drive for this, but uh, in this case, I'm just going to use uh, unencrypted. Just keep it simple. All right, and there's the flash drive. I'm going to move that paper wallet over there, and then I'm going to delete it on the computer. Now, uh, of course, uh, you know, high security situation, uh, forensic experts could. Uh, you know, access deleted files, but uh, we're not going to go uh, heavy duty on that. All right, so we're going to save that. So now we have this paper wallet uh, that has the private key uh, on a USB flash drive. And we'll just remove it from our computer and store it in a safe place. Now, uh, if I need access to the wallet, I have uh, the public address over here. So that's how we set up the Monero paper wallet. Um, just to recap, uh, we uh, went to the uh, moneroaddress.org website. Uh, we downloaded the uh, web page itself. Uh, we cryptographically verified it. Uh, and then after that, we took our computer offline and we ran the generator. And then uh, we saved the uh, private information onto a PDF, which we stored on uh, a flash drive. And uh, we made note of the public Monero address so that we, we will be able to uh, send funds to the wallet. So uh, checking your Monero balance is a little more complicated than Bitcoin because of the nature of the Monero coin. You can't just paste an address in to check balance and transaction history. So it's a bit more complicated. So I'll save that for another video. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, there's a bell next to the subscribe button. Uh, and if you click that when you subscribe, it'll allow you to be alerted every time I post a new video. So uh, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again.